Two weeks ago, the Owl House's finale, Watching and Dreaming, came out. The day before, I made a video on my predictions. Let's see how that went. First, I predicted that Bellos would die by being burnt to death. While I did get the dying part right, which wasn't that hard to reach that conclusion, he wasn't burnt, and instead just got stomped on until he finally died. The Emperor's Castle was a nightmare, but it took way, way less time than I expected. None of the characters died in this episode, aside from Bellos, and maybe Luz. I guess this should be expected, because as far as I know, no main characters aside from villains have died in Disney TV shows who haven't come back to life. The Collector did get redeemed, which I liked, though it happened a lot faster than I thought. But he didn't get adopted by anyone, and instead went back to his family, which I was not expecting. I, don't think, I didn't think any Collector still existed. It was also never confirmed what their name is. Maybe it really is Enzo Gabriel. The portal stayed open between the Boiling Owls and the Human Realm, and Luz has been visiting both. V stayed in the Human Realm, but she seems to be okay visiting the Boiling Owls right now. When I watched Thanks to Them, I made a list of what could have happened in Season 3 if it were a full season, but still had the same plot elements. Since we don't have that much content that could be included, some of the episodes would drag, but I still would prefer this to how it actually was. I didn't make an episode about For the Future, so here's my list for a full season 3. The first 6 episodes encompass the events of Thanks to Them, when, with the first episode being about the Hex Squad settling into the human realm, like the first bit of the episode before the montage, as well as a bit from during the montage. Luz would introduce her mum to her friends and her friends to the human realm. The second episode would be us absolutely freaking out over human stuff. The B plot could be more montage stuff, such as V getting a new form and the first attempt at the portal. The third episode is Luz coming out to her mum. The B plot once more is uh, more montage stuff. Episode 4 would be Hunter's mental breakdown and him cutting his hair, as well as researching about Gravesfield. This one ends with the backstory of Caleb, Evelyn, and Philip. The Hex Squad also find the Rebus in this episode. Episode 5 is part 1 of the, fi of the first mid-season finale. Luz projects onto the ma man in the story in her English class and gets invited to the old Gravesfield Halloween parade and, see and Hunter sees Bellos. Amity, Willow, and Gus and V look for clues on the Rebus. Episode 6 is the mid-season finale, the end of Thanks to Them, and would include everything from the parade to the end of the episode. The next five episodes are about for the future. The seventh episode is about the gang getting to the Owl House, Camilla looking around, and the start of Willow's mental health deteriorating. It would also include Bellos getting to his cave. The 8th episode is the gang going to Bonesboro, seeing the collector's game, and finally reaching Hexide. Episode 9 is inside the Archive House, reuniting with Ida, King, Lilith, and Ardalia. It would also include Bellos taking over Rain. The 10th episode is finding out what's happening at Hexide and everything that happens there. The 11th and 12th episodes would be the mid-season finale, with them getting thrown into the detention pit by Kikimura, Willow's panic attack and getting out. Luz's palisman hatches and they teleport to the skull, Huntlow confirmed. There'd also be more than one line about Gus knowing that Hunter is a grim walker. The mid-season finale ends with the collector deciding to play a new game, like in For the Future. Finally, the last nine episodes are about watching and dreaming. The 13th episode would just be Luz, King and Ida's dreams. It ends with Luz waking everyone up and them reuniting, just to be interrupted by the Collector. Episode 14 is about the Collector playing their games with Luz, Ida and King, and this one would end with the Collector beginning to tell his story. Episode 15 is a flashback episode, told from the perspective of the Collector. Episode 16 is the Hex Squad waking up and Bellos beginning to take over the Titan. Episode 17 is the gang getting rain to help them and then fighting Bellos. It ends with Luz's death. Episode 18 is Luz in the in-between realm, talking to the Titan and then coming back and Luz's battle with Bellos. 
episode 19 is them finally killing Bells, and the rest of the episode is getting the boiling hours back into order, saying goodbye to the collector, and everyone reuniting with their families. Episode 20 is the finale, being the final 10 minutes of watching and dreaming, where everyone is a few years older. It would have the same things as it did in the actual finale, but there are a few more scenes, which include things like V going on a date with Marsha and Adalia getting what she deserves. In general, this was an incredibly good episode. The Titan was awesome. Titan loses my favourite design of the whole show, hands down, and the ending was so heartwarming. As many other people have pointed out, Hunter's new palisman's name is Waffles, and all of the hex squads t- have tattoos of Flapjack, as will most of the fandom soon. I'm glad we got to see Harpy Lilf, as well as the gang all grown up. Lots of people have been comparing the Collector to Steven Universe in how he thought he could redeem Bellas, but I can also see similarities between him and Spinel. Both had who they thought were friends, but then they got left behind and just wanted to play. Also, if I had a nickel for every time that a protagonist of a Disney cartoon who gets trapped in another realm died by fading into bits of nothing, and then meant a powerful, presumably non-binary godlike being, and has a power up before or after this encounter and came back to life, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's really weird that it happened twice. I was so glad this episode didn't have a separation ending, unless you count the collector going back to the other collectors. If you do count that, then it's kind of strange. Only one show that I've finished has had any sort of separation ending. The Owl House has separated everyone from the collector, Stephen Universe separated Stephen from the Crystal Gems, Amphibia famously separated the Calamity Trio from the Planters and everyone back in Amphibia, and Tangled the Series separated Cassandra from Rapunzel and everyone else. The only one where no one was separated was My Little Pony. Overall, this was such a great episode, and is probably my favourite episode of the entire show. I really hope the Owl House gets spin-off, or at least a comic series or journal. This was truly a great show, and I'm so sad to see it end. That's all for today. Bye!